Today's podcast is brought to you by strongheartacademy.com, where no heart is no victory. We are also brought to you by BJJ to go. If you want to build your game and learn jiu-jitsu, go to BJJ to go.com. Okay, so it's been a minute. Uh, I think it's almost been a month now since my last recording. I did one with uh, Jimmy House. It was fun. Um, I've scaled back a little bit. Sorry, guys, but uh, it's been a couple, couple of reasons why. But a um, couple people that follow my podcast say, hey, man, we're going to put another podcast out. So I was like, okay. I had, I've had i had some thoughts going around. And um, you know, recently what's ever, on everyone's mind is the, the school shootings. And, um, you know, it's – Whenever kids die, it's always mm, almost more tragic is the way to put it, I would say. More tragic. Um, you know, when when those kids were trapped in the mine or uh, in the caves in Taiwan, uh, was it Thailand, a couple of years ago, you know, like it was very dramatic, more so because kids were involved, you know. Um, and we keep asking these same questions like, why does this keep happening? Why do mass shootings keep happening? And I'll stick with kind of uh, mass shootings, but also school shootings, you know, and, and kind of my thoughts that no one's asking me for, but I'll share. Um, you know, I started looking into just researching uh, school shootings first is where I started. The first recorded school shooting was in like 1800s. And they've been happening since the 1800s. It's crazy. Like, there's a list. You can look at all the school shootings. Now, the frequency is not as much, but you would be surprised at how many school shootings happened in uh, the late 1800s all the way up to present day. Uh, you know, every dec and they, they did it by decade, and they go the year, decade. It was pretty interesting little uh, dive into it. And so many of these kids commit suicide at, directly after before anyone stops them like they're not stop they stop themselves they commit a crime they commit the murder and then they kill themselves um a lot of the older ones were like shotguns uh and then pistols and you know now they're using uh rifles assault rifles um and but some of these murders were were, were done uh for various reasons a lot of the old ones too were like killing teachers versus students or um a parent coming into the school and killing a headmaster or or a teacher but then they started getting more kids uh killing kids basically but it's not it's actually not a, a new phenomenon like i thought it was actually i thought it started in like the 60s and 70s uh the, what i read was the 70s were some of the most violent times in american history uh, for murder, we also saw started seeing a lot more serial killers, and then I guess up until like the late '80s when uh, the ser serial killers started dropping off, as far as how many serial killers we were getting. But in the '70s, there was a lot of serial killers. Um, then I read another article by the Washington Post. There was a uh, professor of criminology, I think it was from Harvard. Uh, she did she was doing studies. This article was written in 2019. Um, I'm going to reference this a little bit. Um, and she talks about um, studying these events and specifically starting with Columbine. And that was the first one that I remember. At that time, I was in high school when it happened. Uh, maybe I, gra I was my graduation year. So I graduated in 99. That's how old I am. Um, but that was the first big one where the news media had like access to all this backstories and you know they made their own videos they had manifestos and that was a weird thing too i was reading was a lot of these kids even in the 70s and 60s would write diaries i'm going to kill so and so and it's kind of like this fantasizing and you'll notice that if you read about like pedophiles same thing they fantasize this before they act it out and i think rapists do the same thing uh Serial killers is the same thing, and and you see it with these school shootings. It's 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 kind of premeditated. It might not be all the details are premeditated, 
but acting of fantasizing of this thing happening is premeditated. So I feel like one preventative thing is to be involved in your child's life um, and know what's going on, you know, know what's going on. There's, there is signs that it's not so secretive that you don't know that your kids are going in the woods practicing with weapons and writing out crazy scenarios you know you should have you should be knowing what's going on in your child's life and i i it feels unfair but i kind of blame a little bit of parents because you, you you don't know like how do you not know that your kids are having some s deep emotional issues and then if you do know then it's where do you go for help for this it's a, there's no like national organization for this. We're going to just lock them up because they're having thoughts. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have the answer with that, but I do feel like it's so much starts with fantasizing before an act happens. If we can, we if, if we can help people and not just shooters, but like our active shooters do the same thing. This, this fantasizing before it happens. And then you have the copycat copycat problem. One of the things in the article she was talking about was um, the the media perpetuating this and making them famous. You know their names. You know all the backstories. So these people, want, they're going to commit suicide or die by cops, and they want their name to live on through infamy. And she was saying, like, in 1999 when the Columbine thing happened, it made a blueprint for modern school shootings. So all before there's there were many, many, many school shootings. This is not new. Uh, you know, people and even myself, I thought it was a new thing. It's not new. Um, the frequency has increased, but the playbook is similar to Columbine. And even the way they dress, the way they act, all these things. And almost all of them have pre suicidal thoughts also before they commit these crimes you know regardless if your child is going to commit some heinous act you should know or have inkling hopefully if your child's having pre-suicidal thoughts maybe not you know um i have a friend and a student that that did commit suicide and he thought there was a little bit inkling but he didn't know for sure and you know so you don't always know but like I feel like you should try really hard and and I just feel like we're failing these kids versus like for sure these you know it's so evil these 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 acts you know you know I've heard some people say demo demonic almost demonic act they're not even part of themselves anymore and um I just feel so bad for like there's no help. You know, when I was a kid, I had severe depression and and I had some dark thoughts, not about hurting other people, but hurting myself for sure when I was really young. And I, I'm so thankful for my own mother recognized this. My grandfather's a psychologist, so maybe she has a little bit of awareness because of that and tried to get me help, you know. I don't know how much... The therapy helped me, but it got me thinking differently. And at a certain point, I feel like I worked on myself and I did the work to be better. Um, and then I realized how, for me pers personally, exercise helps um, with uh, my depression. I haven't had depression in like 20 something years. So, um, but I am aware of depression because I had it up till I was 20 years old from like six, six years old to 20 years old. I took medication. I took uh, all these things and, and psychologists, psychiatrists, all these things. And um, but I feel like it brought awareness and the thought of knowing that people cared if something happened to me. You know, sometimes with depression, you get this nihilistic feeling that nothing matters. And depression and nihilism are like hand in hand sometimes. And if nothing happens, nothing matters, the consequences are irrelevant. 
and other people don't matter either. So the, the act of taking a life um, becomes just like a process of doing something. The, the, the weight of it isn't as strong because you have a nihilistic feeling, again, that nothing matters. And if nothing matters, your permission to do anything is possible. Your permission with yourself, not even societal, permission with yourself to commit any act that you want to commit. And that's da that's a dangerous thought, and it's like a mind virus, I think. And I feel like currently society is going through this almost nihilistic thing because we're questioning all these values of what people are and what is right, what is wrong, all these moral um, pillars that I felt we have are kind of going away. Um, you know, families are kind of been broken for the last 30, 40 years. And um, I f they say that's getting better, that, that millennials and even modern generations now are like staying together. Fam uh, uh, marriages are staying together. And I just feel that hopefully that like we'll see a change. It's just going to take a couple, like 10, 20 more years. And you'll see the seeds of like people staying together and what that does, you know, because like I said, my mom helped me. My dad was so focused on just making money so that we survived. <laughs> and he just, if mom has to do that, she has to make all the money. It's very hard to have the, the energy to focus on hey, how are my kids doing? Uh, I Instead of just meeting their needs, okay? Uh, meeting their shelter, clothes, food, water needs, um, maybe security, but mental needs, you know? Uh, not having the energy, you know, so much of what a mother is, is in my opinion, is um, the nurturing part of the half uh, when you have a marriage and you have parents and not to say that like you can't have two moms or two dads or well, you can't have one and then it's perfectly fine for sure what is it easier to have two because any job I've ever done if I had to do the job on myself or I had a partner to help me with the job it's easier and to say that parenting isn't a job is insanity and when I do a job I like to do jobs well so even with my kids you know, if I feel like I'm falling behind as a parent, um, it bothers me. And to know that I have a team with my wife, that we can work together to try to help these kids be adults and functioning adults and functioning teenagers and functioning kids. And um, again, I just feel like I, I was fortunate that my mom uh, had the resources to help me. You know, and the time to help me. She was a stay-at-home mom for most of my childhood. When I was really young, she worked, but then she stopped working, and my dad only worked, and she just kind of took care of everything. And my dad focused on making sure that we had uh, all the material things that we needed. Um, and, he, and he was in like an example of how to be a man. Um, so I feel like the, the balance of that was really helpful for myself I don't know if that's you know all these shootings are that way but like um, I do feel like if you need to help your kids and everyone's working who who has time to help out you know if mom's got to work 50 60 hours dad is working 50 60 hours you know I, I, where's the time to 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 dive into the need. I get tired. I get home late. And sometimes I have trouble. You know. I get about an hour with my kids. That's it. <laughs> a day. And then the weekends I spend lots of time. And even Fridays I get off earlier. I try to spend a ton of time. So I try to make up four days a week. Those three days I try to make up all the time. Um, to make sure I know what's going on during the week. What's going on in their lives. How they feel. I ask them how they're doing. How are they feeling. And I didn't get that a lot from my father, but I did get it from my mom, you know, all the time, all the time. And um, when you feel like you're being heard, um, 
and I, I feel like that is very helpful for people and and maybe could solve a lot of this. Well, part of the article that I was reading, she was saying that, you know, when the media dramatizes the violence and that and what happened, it just encourages more copycat, more copycats. And it, it's the blueprint of it. And because of the Internet, it is forever. And, um, you know, when I was looking at all these other uh, school shootings and murders, um, they're very like little bits. You know, it's a printed bit that happened. You know, they might not have had a big part of a paper even. Like it was just like, okay, this happened. Just the bare minute. But the media will dramatize it, you know. We have to get rid of guns. And then we have to get help mental health. And then they'll have senators on. And then they'll have, you know, gun experts on. And then they'll have, you know, all this stuff. And then they'll have, you know, the the names, the pictures of these kids. They'll have the pictures of the victims. Right now, like, I'm like, I can't watch it. I don't want to, I don't want to see all the victims. This is terrible. You know, like, that's not a way to memorize. that. Uh, and I don't know these people. It's crazy. Like, we... Um, if I knew them, it would be so devastating, you know, I don't need more devastation in my life. I don't need more pain in my life. I don't need more sadness in my life. Life is hard enough. And it's like this, it's like murder porn. They call it murder porn, you know, like people just like feast on this and make them angry and they want to act and they want to do something about it. We haven't done anything about it. Like, it doesn't feel like we've done anything. You know, my kids do act as scooter drills, shooter drills. But, like, she was saying, like, but all the kids do these things are almost, almost all are f students. So they've done these drills, too. So, like, you're, 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 you know the drills, but you're also the shooter. So how, that's not even... I'm not even sure how that's helpful. You know where the choke points are. You know where the security's at. You know, before you show up. Uh, um, you you know, my wife was talking to me last night about, like, how the police didn't go into the, sh you know, go in. And they, they, in Texas, they didn't go into the school. They waited an hour. People were pleading. The cops were shooting with the vit shooting the parents with mace, I guess, because they wanted to go in. And then finally, like, some Border Patrol agents decided they were going to go and rushed in, and they shot the guy. You know, that sucked. That's like this stuff, the police departments should be training better, I think, to deal with these situations. They should have a known plan. What happens? What are we going to do if we have an active shooter? And this is that. that, that. Uh, I guess they had a school officer. He didn't do anything. That's, you know disturbing um and but look it, that's your job you know you signed up to be an officer you know that it's a risk um and we are asking you to take that risk you are paid to take that risk um that you possibly will die but that's that's again that's your job not to die but that it known that what the risks are and that that's a bummer, you know, and, um, but I feel like nothing's going to happen. No one's going to do nothing. Just take guns away, but like, how, where are you going to get all the guns away? How is that even possible? It's not even possible. Do I feel like there should be background checks? Yes. Do I feel like, uh, I'm, always, I'm even okay if we're like waiting a week, you know, that's fine, you know, but a lot of this stuff isn't impulse. They bought it, a, buy these weapons a long time. And they're plotted. Again, they they fantasize about this stuff first. I just feel like that's the thing. It's like we need to know when kids are disturbed. She also wrote about like teachers should, should, should be asking kids if they're having suicidal thoughts, if they're having problems. But the, I think teachers are so overworked and so underpaid and under um, – underfunded that how are they going to even do that i mean that sounds nice that sounds great that a, a, a parent or a, a teacher can ask you know you also have the problem with teachers get burnt out 
You know, they're trying to make it to 20 years. By like 15 years, they're burnt out. That last five years for most teachers, I feel like, is like phoning it in. I've had plenty of teachers that were like phoning it in. They're like, I'm here. Make sure you guys don't do anything dumb. It's almost like babysitting. And so, and I don't blame them. They're not getting paid enough. And suddenly, like, even like this, uh, you know, my wife was upset that, uh, like Rand Paul held up $40 million to Ukraine. They still got their money like a week later. Nothing really happened. It's just um, another reason to be angry But um, f- by the media. But, uh, you know, $40 billion. Like, somehow we never have money for schools. Like, my kids are always doing fundraisers for the school. And Arizona is like one of the worst. But um, two things. I feel like a lot of money is wasted in school. And then they're also not getting enough money, you know. I feel like every every teacher should be responsible for all the paper, everything. But they should be paid like a hundred grand, and then people will be more efficient, I think. Um, and I'm not sure that we need all these um, these schools have so many like superintendents. I'm like, why do you have so many people making? Two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. It seems like a waste of money. You know, you go to, you go to like businesses. They don't have that many people at the top. You're like one guy at the top. You have middle managers, but those things, those, they produce. Like, what do these guys produce? Is what I'm saying. What are you producing? Maybe there should be tiered. Like, hey, if the school does better, you you should make bonuses off of that or something. There's no incentivizing. I think in schools to to produce or be better either so it's like not good funding but like we can easily come up with 40 billion dollars to hand off to ukraine i'm not even like anti-ukraine but it's like whenever we say we need money for schools it's like i don't know we don't have it it's like what we have money to hand to people in other countries you know and i get the the geo strategic significance of ukraine i understand but like don't we have a significant um, strategic interest in our kids are going to run the country we want a bunch of stupid kids that are violent and killing each other I don't you know schools could be we could create such a great society I think if we just pumped tons of money into schools help kids be like the best humans they can be (laughs) like I don't why don't we have that mentality it's so weird to me we have such a screwed up mentality. Um, and uh, I, I feel like, man, it, you, you could pump money into like crisis workers that work at schools. You know, I had, I had in high school, I wanted to be a psychologist for like a little bit. Two things happened. My grandfather, who's a psychologist, talked me out of it. Second thing that happened is my school counselor talked me, said that I didn't have good enough grades. That guy, end up hanging himself in the summer he hung himself one of those things too he wanted his family to find it it's terrible it's like that's who my my counselor was he told me i had bad grades and then he killed himself clearly he wasn't good at his job you know he you shouldn't have a person that can't keep it together trying to help kids keep it together what 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 are we doing here like I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. That that guy should be making hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and they should have one in every school, and that's his job to make sure the mental health is, um, is is helping with the mental health of kids. And now with like COVID and pandemic, like these kids are like kids with anxiety issues. I had depression, and a lot of kids had depression and then learning disabilities. But I don't ever remember the anxiety where, like, kids couldn't cope with going outside or being around people. Anxiety of, like, the whole nation is an issue, too. That's a whole other thing. But, like, um, man, I feel like we could help a lot of these school things. You know, we talk about mental health or gun control. But, like, I'm cool with um, certain gun control um measures i don't want lists of people i don't want the government have a list of who is you should check against the list 
of people that shouldn't have guns, felons, you know, if you're on a list, that you're already on a list, that's fine. But I don't want a list of people that are purchasing weapons. I don't, I'm not cool with that. I'm not. I'm okay with background checks. I'm okay with uh, time, maybe three days, five days. Maybe it's a, uh, a, a heat of passion. You want to get a gun to kill someone. Hopefully five days. You have to think about how crazy that is and, and become more rational. I'm fine with that. I can wait five days for a gun. I don't need a gun within five days. Like right now. I don't. Okay. Um, and if I did, I'm in Arizona. I have enough friends that will go, hey, I know that you're you're worried about someone's trying to hurt harm you. I could lo- someone would loan me a gun. And I saw like a uh, it was a article uh, video on YouTube, and it was like um, Comedy Central's uh, what's their news with Noah. I have not watched it since that guy is so woke. And they're like, you know, I guess they're trying to be funny or whatever. And they're showing like uh, Austria, how they have the most guns, but they're like so secure. I'm like, it's just a different place. Like they don't have as many people as we do either. Not even close. It's like, I don't even know what they got. Probably 20 million. That's the state of California. (laughs) There's like 6 million in Phoenix alone. There's millions of guns in America. How are you going to get rid of that? It's not, I feel like we need to work on people. And, and helping people that are hurt and damaged. Why are we not doing that? And so for me, I guess it's more mental health crisis versus gun control. But I'm fine with gun control. With guns, I feel like you should take a course, a safety course. You know, so many people don't know how the rules of gun safety. I had a student. He was telling me that his mom who's an officer, I won't name names, was an officer, gave him a BB, BB gun. I'm like, oh, what's the, I just quizzed, what's the safety rules of gun ownership? And he was like, what? I was like, your mom is an officer. She didn't tell teach you gun safety? I just feel like that would cut down on accidental deaths at least. <laughs> you know, never point a gun at someone. Ne- go, never keep your finger on the trigger. Know what's beyond the target. Never shoot at something you don't intend to destroy. Like these are these are um, never hand a loaded weapon to someone. I always pull the rack back so you can see there's no bullet inside before I hand a weapon to someone. These things will cut down on a lot of death. A lot of death. So I'm fine with that. You know, it could be through the game and fish department. You know, they have hunting classes. I'm fine with that, too. You take a class. They would make it cheap, you know, instead of like, um, you know, they of course, they would try to privatize it. And then it's like so expensive to take this course and then shut people out of guns. That would be the down. That would be the downside of that. But I feel like if you had a course you had to take, and that's part of the five days waiting period, you take your course. That you know how to safely operate. You ha- We have to take a course for driving a car, right? You have to pass a test to drive a car because it's a one-ton vehicle moving eight, tw- over 20 miles an hour. will smash a human being to pieces. So I'm fine with – same thing with weapons, guns. I'm fine with that. I'm even fine with maybe assault rifles uh, need to be 25. I'm fine with that too. Um, you know, pistols, you have to be 21, I believe, you know, rifles, and then they get in the gray area. Well, it's a rifle, not a, not, you know, what's the difference between assault rifle and a rifle? Okay. Semantics a little bit here. Um, hunting rifles are different. No one hunts with AR-15 or, I mean, there's so many versions of AR-15s and there's Tavar. There's like, you know, I like weapons. So I just, I don't know. Semantics. Gun owners don't want to give up anything, and then uh, extremely liberal people want to take everything away. It's like no medium ground, no centralism. Uh, it's crazy. But I think those are the two things that I would do if I can ma- wave a magic wand. I would have a school counselor that makes 100000 to $150,000 a year that is has resources also to him to help people with um, – 
with uh, mental health, you know. I think they should have even sessions like people can go and get therapy at a school. Well, that's the guy's job. Like, you're having issues. You can go talk to the counselor for an hour a week, you know. Why not? Why, why can't we do that? It doesn't seem that crazy to me. He has an office. It's the same thing as a psychologist does. He has an office and he, you know, he just makes more money. And they charge, what, 150 bucks at 15 minutes an hour or whatever. Why can't we do pay this guy 100, 100 grand, 150 grand? He sits in an office. Any kids that are having issues, the teachers talk to kids. They say, hey, we want you to go to the office. You're not in trouble. Let's talk to this guy or woman or whatever. How much? How how much would that help us? And like we're like, you no, know, that's crazy. We don't have the money for that. Oh, here's forty billion dollars, Ukraine. Anyway, on that on that note, peace out. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe, share, go in the comments. Tell me I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's fine. Um, God bless. Hope you have a good weekend. Bye. Let me talk for just a second Help me feel that sense of rhythm Find the meanings in our bearings And discover this position As a stage along the way Another rung to the ladder Either stalling or you're climbing And I'd rather be the ladder Instead of getting fatter Let the footsteps resume Naturally